And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some mono green mid range. Our next deck in our rank up Sunday stream. You may remember this deck from about 10 days ago. Um, it was pretty impressive just because of how consistent it was with the mana and everything like that. And so let's run it back. We're going to give it the test in Mythic this time and see how it holds up. The reason why we put this deck together is to have a just another shelf for Karn the Great Creator in Standard. There's a lot of Witch's Oven and food decks that are trying to activate their artifacts, whether it's just cracking the foods or um, activate Witch's Oven. And Karn shuts that down with the, um, with the passive ability. And so I just kind of felt like there should be some more ways to really utilize Karn. The other thing about the Karn's minus, though, is you usually, like, the best things to get, like, besides Spyglass, which is a really good quality card, kind of one of the better cards to get is Meteor Golem. And that costs a lot of mana. And so we want to be able to have a deck that produces a lot of mana. And, of course, Nyssa is very good at producing a lot of mana. So I like pairing those together, and so that's what we're going to be doing here in this mono green mid range deck. Um, you know, we have some aggressive elements with Questing Beast, Yorvo, um, but then we have a lot of, and of course, Arcbow Ranger being very aggressive. But then we have a lot of card advantage. We have, um, we have really kind of it all starts with the Great Henge, um, but you know, Ugin is just a, a really good top end card as well. But this deck is definitely a, a the Great Henge deck. Now, it looks like we're only playing one Great Henge, but this is a le legendary artifact. So it's an artifact, so Karn can grab it. So also these Karns can go grab the Great Henge as well. So basically, we have four slots for, we have four the Great Henges in the main deck, where but we only have one slot taken up. Because, you know, sometimes you just have, like, extra Great Henge. If you're playing a Great Henge deck, you get them stuck in your hand, and you don't have the large creatures, you can't play it. Of course, Growth Chamber Guardian is just amazing with the Great Henge. Hey, Hawkeye. And so we have the Growth Chamber Guardians in there also. Because, um, yeah, those those work out really well. Got a little bit of removal with Voracious Hydra. After sideboarding, we got all these Shifting Ceratops for the Counterspell decks. Um, once, once in future for a little bit of more card advantage when need be. Just a lot of good stuff here. So let's let's uh, give this a try. Let's see. We're gonna be playing five matches over in ranked. Yeah. Yep. MK. I do. Yep. I I built all these decks today. Or like these all these ones that we're playing today are all ones that that I built. But yeah, that's what I do. I build decks. So yeah, if Karn ticks up on the Great Henge, do you make it like a twelve twelve? <laughs> Let Hawkeye make the decisions. Hawkeye always makes the decisions. He's always making decisions. What's up, Paul? Resub 14 months. So many months. Thank you so much there, Paul. Yorvo. I kind of want to just activate Incubation Druid, to be honest. Now we'll, we'll get this thing in play. Because I could activate Incubation Druid and then cast Growth Chamber Guardian, which would be my best play for this turn, but that would turn on Quench being able to, to counter it. Get 
Just taking it, huh? So I want to do want to play this this way so that if they have Nissa, we have a blocker for the three three with Nissa, and we'd still be able to have Ugin minus and kill the Nissa. You know, I could have had Ugin destroy the Krasis last turn. I guess this is lethal, though. I shall be gone, interloper. Yeah. I should probably be playing the Ceratops. Basically, Nightpack Ambusher is the card that I'm like the scared of the most. But the thing is, like Ceratops doesn't really match up that well against Nissa. And maybe they're like the Risen Reef Ramp deck. We don't know. Like, is Ceratops better than, like, Karn, maybe? Hmm. Yeah, either way, it was a Simic deck with a really bad hand. It was either, yeah, the Ramp, you know, Ramp or Flash. Probably Flash, but I guess we don't really know. All we saw was a Krasis and a Nyssa. Either way, they just had a really slow hand. I wish that we had better answers for Nightpack Ambusher than what we do. I don't know if there's really good answers in Mono Green though, besides just like little little fight spells. Kind of a slow hand also, but we're keeping it. But our, our best turn two play, of course, is just like a mana creature anyway, and we, we're already going to be curving out. Even without it. Okay, so they're a ramp deck. Hey, Vina Kava, a brand new Twitch Prime sub. Venakava, welcome to the channel. Give Hawkeye some extra pets. He's excited. Thank you very much. Alright, so it looks like they're a ramp deck. That can be tough, of course.
Hmm. Blue green ramp with four ether gusts and agent of treachery and stuff. This is this is the matchup we don't really want to face. I think this was our, our loss the last time, if I remember correctly. Because they do have good removal with either Gust, and I don't at all. This card doesn't match up too well. Why Why does Ceratops seem good? We just saw them play Lovestruck Beast and Cavalier of Thorn. What do you, what do you want the Ceratops to do? Just trade with the Lovestruck Beast? Not trade with Cavalier of Thorn? Yeah, Ceratops can still get gusted while it's on the stack. Yep. I mean, I guess it's better than Brontodon. I guess we don't need Brontodon. I'll see in their deck more. We, we really don't need Brontodon. So it's going to be an upgrade there. Yeah, that, that, all that's still better than Brontodon. We are a, a similar deck here. They have a lot more power. We have more consistency. We have better defense, but like they're a similar deck. The the board stalls out. They're just going to be going bigger though. Usually when you have similar type decks, it's good to have the one that goes bigger in just mirror matches in the history of Magic. Their, their deck does. So I'm going to play the Growth Chamber Guardian out here. If they are focused on... Like, if they play some kind of removal for the Growth Chamber Guardian, if they do... You know, they spend their mana worried about this, maybe that makes it easier to resolve Ugin. So if I tick up, we protect against Nyssa. This does not protect against Nyssa with the minus. But this is, is better against, like, Cavalier. Get that Risen Reef out of here. Where I probably don't want to kill the Cavalier anyway. Killing Cavalier right now would not be the worst thing. They only get Risen Reef back. That's that's not the worst thing. So yeah, we we can we can kill this one if they attack. I'll try to double block with the four four and the two two. And then of course they could Ether Gust the four four to keep their Cavalier alive. But then if they do that, the, the Grilled Chamber Guardian, all that is is just having the Grilled Chamber Guardian go down to the bottom of the library where we can grab it out of the deck again. So that's a good, it's a good Ether Gust for us. Because they can't Ether Gust the Colorless Token. So 
that's a that's a good trade for us. Ether Gus is really valuable, obviously. Oh no, Blast Zone. So I can try to have Hydra kill Cavalier. Which would be nice if it works. Secrets manifest before. They didn't play anything else, though. The other problem with having Hydra kill Cavalier is that is just another two drop to put into play with Blast Zone. Because, yeah, it's still a two mana card. Yeah, there's a very good chance they have a second gust also. No, they had a Nyssa. Ugh. Well, that made my attack look bad. But obviously that kills Ugin. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Uh, that's not good. Arugan was dead to Nessa, you know, a couple other t turns ago, too. Can we draw our Nessa? No, we just have to draw more two drops, seriously? We have four Nisses in here also. How do you expect me to kill the 3-3? Three -three? With this Voracious Hydra that as soon as we play it, they just blow up Blast Zone and destroy my Voracious Hydra? That won't work. Now we can. So we have seven mana. I think this is a better play, though. Yeah, so we'll just have the Yorvo BSXX for us. Gator Brank, 11 months. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. I'm still running Chandra Tribal at a local F&M. The LGS closes for good today. Oh, no. Oh, that is too bad. But, yeah, hopefully you find a new location for you and your daughters at... A good F and M there, but thanks, thanks for keeping that tier one sub going. Thank you so much. Okay, Karn, Karn's good. Karn's good.
So I want to have a lot of mana. My my plan next turn is go Karn, go grab, have Karn grab Meteor Golem, Meteor Golem, the Nissa. That's my plan. And so then I want some blockers for the Karn as well. You only get a counter from green creatures. Lame. Obviously, this this castle though is going to be destroying me. I kind of need to grab. I need like Meteor Golem to kill Nissa, and I need Spyglass to stop this Vantress, and I could use the Great Henge as well. Behold, nature's true power. But. Karn's definitely definitely a, a start. Ooh. Well then, that changes things. Because now you can kill Nissa. Another I can create or destroy. Our actions determine. And I can still have these three blockers. All right, so Castle Vantra shut off. Keep them from doing all this scrying. They've already scried four cards to the bottom. Yeah, yeah, Ugin and Karn together. That it is a really good combo. Oh, no attacks. No attacks. I will read you of your Let's go grab the Great Henge. Let's get some card advantage. All right, I want to grab that that last growth chamber guardian here first. Um, I want to do this. We have so many options. So many options. I kind of want to kill this cavalier. What are they going to do with Cavalier? Just get back Nyssa? I'm not too scared of Nyssa. Mm, I don't know. Maybe I won't. What? I guess I had to hold full control. Darn. Yeah, they could get back Blast Zone, but I'm not sure if Blast Zone's doing a whole lot for them. I was planning on using... I was planning on adapting this Growth Chamber Guardian before it got the extra counter from the Great Henge. I was planning on tapping this Incubation Druid to do that. Getting Risen Reef back. Okay, draw that. Draw that next card.
Yeah, so I can make this thing like a 9-9, right? And attack in with it. That's probably pretty cool. Okay. <clears throat> we won that matchup that I thought was going to be pretty tough for us. But they... You know, they kind of flooded out and didn't really have a whole lot in the end. Shutting down the Castle Vantress was big. That Ugin draw was big. Yud! Yud's here. On the Sunday. Sunday, Yud day. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, I'm sorry, Yud. I just saw your... No... You had to tell me you had to tell me a little faster. Cuz of the delay. <laughs> yeah, you get 15 I think I think you stop getting daily win XP after 15 wins, I think. Oh, okay. Awesome, Yud. Well, thank you. Let's see what that is. Alright, so what do we got? We got Gruul. Gruul Adventure. Probably Teamer. It's probably Teamer Adventure. Do I have a really good card to get with Karn for Team or Adventure? I mean, maybe it's Gruul. Alright, let's kill the 1-1. One -one. So they can't attack with a Lovestruck Beast, plus I grow my Yorvo. All right, well, we gotta take that. Looking like it's just gruel. I'm excited, Yud. I'm excited for what this code's going to be. All right, so it looks like they got Ember Cleave also. It's Trump Lock here. Um, one, two. What would I have? I would have six, seven, eight. So actually, I get to do it all. I get to do everything. I get to do everything. No more Ember Cleave. Stop equipping Ember Cleave. We did it all. We did it all. <sighs> Alright, so they get to Rimrock Knight, the Love Struck Beast, to turn it into a large enough creature to kill the Yorvo. Fine. I'll, I'll take the trade. I could I could just chump block with the voracious hydra and, and you know play more stuff and grow the Yorvo more. Which 
I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to be doing that. Yeah, they could play another cleave if they draw another cleave. Ooh. <laughs> Storm goes, well, this is fair. Wait, now use... Uh, how do we get them to use this... This this man. I need them to use this mana. Opponent, where are you going? We we're just we we're just starting. So yeah, our deck can do some crazy stuff with Nissa, Karn, Ugin in play. So I like Bronzedon because it destroys Ember Cleave. Basically, I'm not sure if we actually sideboard here. Karn's kind of the best whenever we have the other stuff in play. Maybe not necessarily on its own. Like the reason why our Karn was so good is because we had other things. Maybe we take out one Karn here and play a Ceratops that does a better job blocking. Maybe we just play the extra Brontodon. Yeah, that, the Azorius Flyers deck was Kendis's that we played yesterday in best of three. Turns out Nissa's even better when all of your lands are forests. That's a card that needed to get better. That's how you can make Nissa even better. Kind of expecting Rimrock Knight there. Well, that was like my best card to draw. Taking five from the Love Struck Beast here. They don't have other good attacks. Yeah, MTG Goldfish is a is a great website. Yep. They do a lot of good things. It's the magic website that I use the most. Oh, don't have an ember cleave. Hmm. 
Cleave's annoying. Yeah, we got Bronte Boy. <clears throat> we get to block the uh, Lobstruck Beast and have it be blocked. Well, this takes out their 1-1s. So they can't keep attacking with the Lobstruck Beast now. They don't draw another one one so I, I want my growth chamber guardian to trade with the bone crusher giant not the questing beast ouch Nisa. Um. So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be trading Lovestruck Beast with Questing Beast. I don't I don't think so. I don't know. Basically right now we're just kinda on the Nissa ult plan. Ten, twelve. Hmm. I guess that's a good plan too. Could make it even larger, but this is enough to trigger your vote twice. And still attack with all these three threes and everything. Like this game's kind of over. It's like we just we just kill the five five. We drew two. Uh, those voracious hydras that we drew. We, we drew them both at very good times. So like how the the simic deck goes bigger than us. Um. Well, I thought that was going to be tough for us. We go bigger than the gruel deck. So I thought. So I think the gruel is kind of a good matchup for us. All right, Yud sent me a code. Yud said this is my Christmas gift. And Yud got this code for judging a Pioneer tournament this weekend. So let's see what this code is. No, the code doesn't work. Oh, no. I think I... Yeah, yeah, recheck. No. <laughs> Scammed. Yeah, that's 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 what we that's what I had. Oh, huh. I don't know what was different there. Oh, it was a Q, not a G. It was a Q, not a G. What do we get? Ooh, look at this sleeve. Whoa, and it has, it's really shiny. 
So this is like the Royal Scions. Fire and Ice. Sword of Fire and Ice Sleeve. Awesome. Thank you so much there, Yud. Exclusive to, to which event? We have to change one of our other decks for that. Yeah, those are awesome. We we can't change it like oh no, we aren't in an event. Never mind, I could have changed I could have put the sleeves on immediately. Ah, I'm just used to I was used to playing the events, and so I was that's what I was gonna be saying is that we can't change our sleeve right now, but I could have changed it right now. Yeah. All of our cards are great. I guess Growth Chamber Guardian, but Growth Chamber Guardian works so well with the Great Henge. So obviously we want Incubation Druid into Questing Beast. I guess we put this back. I mean, it's either that or put the Great Henge back. I don't think we put the Great Henge back. They kill my Incubation Druid, I'm going to be kind of sad. Especially after putting that Growth Chamber Guardian that was like our only other castable. Yud, Yud got those sleeves for... No, like th that that was not a, a free code. No, that, that code was uh, because Yud judged a, a tournament this past weekend. And so got that from judging. So thank you, Yed. Don't kill my stuff. Let me play the Great Henge next turn. We don't want don't want you to kill anything, and I want to draw land. No, that's killing stuff. I don't approve. And I also did not draw a land. I don't approve of that either. I don't love that. Ooh, we did. We quick, quick drew. We're giving our opponent time to stabilize. But we have our top end stuff if we draw lands. But we're giving them time to, you know, just set up and do their whole Esper hero thing. Yay, land. Boom. Cerebus's favorite creature. Yep. That turn really hurt. The Deputy Thought Erasure turn. That turn hurt. They took Ugin because Ugin destroys Deputy and gets me my Questing Beast back. That's my assumption. So, like, Ugin comes attached to a questing beast. What's up, Neo? Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Coming back that second month. 
streak now. We will not fail. I don't know. What do you think we're doing right now? We're not really not failing. Behold, nature's true power. Peace. You're seventy percent sure that we're still gonna win this? I am not going to sit this one out. We're not making. I mean, Arnissa's no, gonna die now. Well. Okay, so now we're now Arnissa's dead. So now we're in a lot of trouble. Now we're doing a lot better. How can we keep on drawing Voracious Hydra at like the perfect time to draw Voracious Hydra? We're really good at that. Citadel's pretty awesome. So this is not a that good of a trade for me trading Voracious Hydra for Elite Guard Mage. But the thing is is the trade doesn't really get that much better for me if we just like try to have a bunch of creatures out here, it just kinda of turns on their citadels. Getting these elite guard mages off the battlefield is good for Tyrant Scorn. Because Tyrant Scorn can just bounce the guard mages, they replay them kind of thing. So it's good to get those out of there too. It should be bouncing either Othakaya or Guard Mage, one of the two. Don't worry, I got this. I think if I'm them, I'm probably bouncing Guard Mage here, not Othakaya. I think I'd rather draw a card than kill the Paradise Druid. Especially with Bola Citadel, you know, like having a, a specific time to draw a card. I think that's more valuable. Well, I guess I wasn't really expecting Soren. That's a reason not to kill Elite Guard Mage. We gotta get that. You would have bounced the Henge. Yeah, I guess that's that's another option. They're just clearing those cards off. Could have cleared it off by drawing them. So I want to hit Questing Beasts. That's the card I want to draw. I want to draw Questing Beast. I wish I could attack Soren, but with Othakai, I really just can't. The 
Here we go. have to get that other guy out of here. You just have to. <laughs> hey, fat butters. Well, thank you so much subbing in for an entire year saying it's been a hell of a year it sure has thank you so much and that gets us our next sub goal towards our next 12 hour stream so first sub goal of the day hit Jeskai deck worked well. We just we struggled to get both of our losses were to Gruel. Uh, with all the haste creatures and everything. It's a tough that's a tough matchup. That's more like it. It's the only deck that we've lost to with that deck is Gruel. We played it the last time, that was the only deck we lost to as well. Yeah, Bola Citadel is an amazing card. It's there, the Great Henge. I'm known for my excellent type. Hey Priestess, happy holidays. All right, let's get some more artifact and enchantment removal. Let's grab these ceratops. Hmm. We gotta cut seven cards though. It's so, like Vivian can be removal for us, which as we see, like with the stuff they're playing, the, the removal is pretty. Valuable, but we have to have a creature in play also, and that may not be as easy to do. Do I just take out, like, Paradise Druids? Doesn't seem right. Seems weird taking out Questing Beast also. Kind of 
kind of just trimming around the edges. Yeah, I don't... Yes, we can grab Spyglass with Karn, but I don't think Spyglass is valuable in this matchup. They have too many ways to get rid of it. And all it, all it's doing is, what, like just saying three mana Teferi or Sorin, like that's it? Just have all their deputies and... I think the most valuable thing that Karn can grab is Meteor Golem. <laughs> okay, so the for that sleeve, the name of the event is Exquisite Event Reclaim the Throne. The, the sleeves are exclusive to a one-day event to celebrate the new WPN program with the qualifying premium stores. Wow, so yeah, it really is a, it's a very exclusive sleeve. Thank you so much, Yud. Yeah, we'll have to change our sleeve after this match, because I forgot to. That's why we lost that game, because I forgot to change the sleeve. Oh wow, they're down a lot of time. I don't think that'll come into play, but... Guess you never know. Since they're a multicolor deck, a lot of their stuff is blue. Like, they have Dispark. Like, they have Dispark, but that's kind of about it. Because, you know, like, Teferi, Deputy, Tyrant Scorn... I guess they have Mortify. Mortify works too. <clears throat> I did the Ceratops first. To grow the... That thing that I my that we grew. Is greater than myself. Um Great Henge or another meteor golem. Grow Yorvo, yeah. And try to make it basically because that would make that made the Yorvo um, five five power toughness, and then the the shifting Ceratops was five also. So it's make we made it like four attacks from those things total to kill them. And it's not like like the next turn if I would have gone Karn and then Ceratops haste, it's, it's not like the next turn I'm playing. I'm not playing anything we're grabbing with Karn. I liked getting Ceratops under Thought Erasure, too. Because I thought that they were really going to struggle killing the Ceratops. So I liked getting that pressure, not letting them Thought Erasure away Ceratops and try to kill them with those two things. Turned out they had the answers for those things, but... Hmm. I kind of want to tick up and make this thing a 9 9. You will not threaten this world. But 
then if they have like removal for the great henge after we make it a nine nine you know like destroy a creature kind of thing like mortify or something that would kind of be bad Of my voracious hydra. I need to stop drawing lands. Interesting. How is that line better than. How is that line better than killing my 4 4? Wouldn't you rather have a 4 5 that kills that 4 4? Yeah, we're flooding out. But eventually we'll stop drawing lands. All we gotta do is draw like, you know, one. <clears throat> uh... Growth Chamber Guardian, that's the name of the card. We just gotta draw one Growth Chamber Guardian. I can't adapt the druid. It has a counter on it. Whenever a card has a counter on it, you can't adapt it anymore. I guess I could have just done eight and still fought and killed that thing. But yeah, that was lethal. Well, Karn looked good there. Can we fit another Karn in here? Maybe because we drew so many lands. Take out a beast for another Karn. Yeah, we can't just like play... We can't just like get, get rid of all of our creatures. I understand that Yorvo is very easily answered. But I, I don't think we can just get rid of all of our creatures and our curve and stuff like that. No, my, my opponent's not playing Doom Foretold. No, they're playing old school Esper Hero. Basically they're a they're a Bola Citadel deck. You know, Hero Precinct One and Bola Citadel are their two big time payoffs. That's the thing. Yorvo, you know, playing Karn into Hero Precinct One isn't as isn't as great. <laughs> no, I don't have any plans for a Hydra plus Fling brew. No, no plans there. Well, good hand. Good hand. Really hope we draw Voracious Hydra again and get to kill this hero. Ceratops doesn't even look good against Hero. You know, like it doesn't. It doesn't match up well against a bunch of white creatures. But it's our play. It's the best play we got. Karn would just die. No, there's no castle. Or there's no uh, Stone Cold Serpents in the deck. But yeah, we could make. If we, you know, had to have like. The castle and Nissa and stuff. He could make some huge Stone Coral Serpents. It's true. I wish we had Stone Coral Serpent for this matchup. Hmm.
Boom. I wonder if I would have just attacked with the Ceratops first if they would have just unloaded the Dispark. I feel like we just heard the song a little bit ago. Maybe not. Nah, yeah, they would have just mortified the Ceratops. Hero of Precinct 1. Good card. Good card. I will defend my allies. I will not lose another friend. Two cards left. If they have removal for Ceratops, getting this Great Henge basically doesn't do anything. I gotta hope they don't have more removal for Ceratops, because we've already seen them use one to spark, one Mortify. Stop. These thought erasures. <laughs> uh, I keep Karn minusing, grabbing something cool, and then they thought erasure immediately. They got rid of the other thought erasure. Undo. I don't want to tap my Paradise Druid. Boo. I don't even need to do this anyway. They didn't even block. That was just dumb of me. It's kind of instinct. <laughs> Boo. I guess we gotta fight through these things. You once had a situation where you used Domri 4 to cast a creature and it didn't use the special Riot mana to cast it. <laughs> Almost uninstalled the game right there. Whoops. More like Obnoxious Grasp. That's a pretty good card. Four mana, the amount of mana they have. You get a 2-3, a 2-3 a flyer, a 1-1. One, one. You get to gain three life, and you get to draw a card.
Bell haunt? We hadn't seen a bell haunt the whole match. Well, I wish I would have played that land. That land could have been important. Well, awesome hand. Game one and three. GG's. GG's. I just had the animation, or the, uh, not that word, the interaction that they needed at different times. Oh, cancel. Yay. We got to change our sleeves. Panavia! Getting that recept going as well. Thank you so much there, Panavia. Ten awesome months. Yeah, it looks like the sleeves are maybe a little buggy. We'll see how... We'll see how they look um, here in game. <laughs> the effect is not bugged, it's exclusive. Let's give it a try. Want to draw forests. This deck can definitely do some really cool things at times, though. <laughs> okay, it's, it's a little bugged. Has a nice sound, though. The sword sheath sound. How'd I get this sleeve? Uh, Yud, Yud just sent it to me. Yud. Um, judged a, an in store event that had the sleeves. As a part of it. I'm gonna adapt this thing first. Oh, come on. That's so unnecessary. Yeah, you tell him, Questing Beast. How, how unnecessary was that?
Hmm. I wish we had a, an adapted incubation druid. My patience. I fight. My grief fuels my mission. Yeah, that's that's my plan, I guess, is to see if uh, try to play that to try to turn off Nissa. Nissa would still be able to add double mana, but now hopefully we get to untap with Karn and then we can Meteor Golem. Well, we have Cavernous Souls in Standard. Quench is lame. Well, I think the answer is no, we're not on top of the barn. Summer, where are you? Behold, nature's true Why did you have to die? They played the, that creature on their turn because for mana considerations. Uh, they had like the, the three mana to be able to just use it. Right, my whole plan, I was going to keep the Growth Chamber Guardian in hand. Whoops. I was going to keep that one in hand. That was my whole, my whole plan. The land fights for us. Whoops. <sighs> kind of messed up the whole plan.
Oh well. We got a new plan now. All right, so we can have Arcbow Ranger kill the Nyssa. So they stop getting free three threes. I want to play this first to kind of test them. Well, it's not great. belongs to it with my aim and their claws you're done All right. Ended up getting there. Bringing in all all dem ceratops, cut the brontodons. What else do we cut though? We gotta take out two more cards. Probably wanna take out something that costs four or more. I don't think we wanna cost, take out two or three meta cards. Could play the once in future also to get two things back at instant speed to kind of help us play around instance a little bit. Could just take out two questing beasts, could take out an Arcbow Ranger. I don't know, Arcbow Ranger looked kind of good there. Could just take out two beasts. We'll do that. Yeah, B stone walls the lands. I mean, so does Ceratops. You know, we can't we can't have everything that costs four or more, or can we? I mean, Beast is a good card in this matchup. I just don't know if it's better than all of our other cards that cost four or more. We have a plan. <laughs> Alright, if your eyes are sensitive, you may want to look away. I have to get the good luck shine. Okay, I'm done.
So they missed land drop. I'm going to kill their Paradise Druid. Necessary. What's up, boot? Uh, Golos is just a really good card to have in the sideboard because of, we, like, with Karn. For Karn to be able to, like, when you don't have, like, another thing to play the next turn, Karn grabs Golos for you. And helps you ramp. You can go grab Castle Ardenvale if you want, but it ramps you into like you know, ramps you into Ugin and and everything. Just a good quality blocker. It's just a good card. It's not really for any specific matchup. So they need a Brazen Borrower to be able to bounce to stay alive. Which they do have. They should have blocked it first. I guess if they block, they don't get to attack with the Love Struck Beast. I was thinking they, they block first, and then I activate Trample with the Paradise Druid, and then they bounce to stay alive, and then I don't have a blocker, but then they can't attack with the Beast. Alright, we're 3-1. and one. Yeah, Historic takes, or Standard definitely takes longer than Historic. We're an hour and a half in at 3-1. and one. Let's play one more. I am enjoy I enjoy playing this deck. Let's play another one. That Santa hat works really well there. Boot. I like it. We're going to car next turn. Aren't so good against these. Snackerfice decks. Dude, this would be a good time for Golos. Just a ramp. We need more mana. I think that's what I'm going to grab. We could grab Spyglass to do Spyglass stuff. I think I'm going to grab Golos. Power 
Maybe I'm supposed to grab spy glass. Because <clears throat> then if they have removal for Karn here, I could spy glass the oven still. I don't know. I just want to draw land. Don't kill my Yorvo. Make me chump block. Please stop. Could have done the double blocks, but it's just too risky to have. Let's go for it. I think it's too risky to have Incubation Druid die there. Now Incubation Druid can die. Incubation Druid's done its job. So they cannot crack the food because of Karn. They can have Wolf sacrifice it. But that's what they have to do. They have to have the Wolf sacrifice it. Actually, I don't like that I just played this Ugin. Now to think about because they're going to Mayhem Devil and kill it. Ooh, they let me wicked get rid of the Wicked Wolf. Alright, Wicked Wolf gone. Yeah, so now I'll take up on Ugin. Could have destroyed the trail of crumbs too. <clears throat> we don't need to. Ugh, Vraska, no. Don't be surprised if we meet again. Vraska, no. So I can turn the food into, basically, Karn's tick up just kills food tokens. It just destroys them on the spot.
I don't force them to do this. Because, yeah, it's because it turns it into a zero CMC creature. So it's zero CMC, so it turns it into a zero zero. Murderous Rider. It is best if you stop. I got I got six. So I have to. So I'm either gonna kill Vraska or Trail of Crumbs. I'm gonna get rid of this Trail of Crumbs while we have the chance before I completely regret it later on. I don't know, maybe that's not the right move, because because Karn can can get because obviously the Ugin's gonna die. But Karn can get Mayhem Devil to destroy Trail of Crumbs, which I guess this thing draws this card right now, or Trail of Crumbs wouldn't draw a card right now. Alright, Yud. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so yeah, the code was very good. Have a great night. I really appreciate that. So, yeah, thank you. Oh, they killed a Karn. Interesting. So I guess next turn I'm probably getting the Great Henge. Well, that hurts. I need that Growth Chamber Guardian for my Great Henge. That I hadn't gotten yet. Let's 
Let's get rid of this goose so they don't get to make more food for the wicked wolves. And now we have a, a large creature to play some good defense for us. We're looking pretty great right now. How do we win? I don't know. We'll just attack them. We'll attack them eventually. Oh, what do you mean how do we win? We just we just win. He doesn't have trample, right? They have like no blockers. <laughs> this is standard. What do you mean, how do we win? The game just eventually ends. And no one really knows why or how. There we go. But yeah, the game ended eventually. <sighs> Karn was absolutely incredible, that game. That's why we we're building, you know, that's that's like the whole reason why we built the, the deck was because of like that game right there. Karn was just incredible. Just kept them from activating their stuff. Witches Oven didn't do anything. Karn was amazing. So let's get this extra Return to Na Nature and extra Brontodon in here. I don't know what to cut. Could be a Druid. I don't know. I don't want to really. I don't really want to cut a Druid. Could be a Yorvo and a Questing Beast. I guess Bronzodon just replaces Yorvo, even though Yorvo's usually better, but for this matchup, we kind of want Bronzodon. And then either a Beast or Incubation Druid. I think I want to keep everything else. I guess just a Beast. Questing Beast doesn't line up super well against Wicked Wolf. <laughs> this can definitely be a hand that we lose. White Beetle? Who would do such a thing? White Beetle? Are you kidding me? Most random card. My opponent's already worried about their mono green mid range matchup. They're prepping hard for it over here. They're they're on a different level than I am. Oh yeah, we got charged with the sleeves. Again, look, I'm gonna charge with the sleeves. If you don't, if your eyes are sensitive, you don't know, look away. But we gotta charge them up for good luck.
Hopefully they do not have another murderous rider. I mean, they had to use their food token to cast it anyway this last turn. No. No. All right, we have a basic land still. Hmm. It's like kind of better for me that we're not getting the counter put on it. <laughs> no. All right. Maybe I should have just killed the blight beetle first. Yeah, maybe I should have just killed that Blight Beetle first. Yeah, trade an Ugin for a 2 one 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 I know, right? What does this world come to? I kind of want to get rid of the Gilded Goose. But Meteor Golem just draws a card. Like, I kind of want to, sp like, grab Spyglass to shut down the Wicked Wolf thing, but Meteor Golem just draws a card. Gotta get rid of trailer crumbs. Yeah, meter golem just awesome. So that taps the witch wicked wolf, right? Perfect. Cool, so we don't have to use the Voracious Hydra for lethal. I mean, it's lethal either way, but... Watch out. They bite. 
I guess it was lethal if I would have just targeted the wolf right away. I guess I should have looked at that <laughs> instead of targeting the trailer crumbs. Uh, I, I guess I should have just targeted the wolf. Anyway, that was a pretty awesome match. This is You and I by PVRIS. My creations are kings of beauty. That was a pretty awesome match. And that's kind of like what, what I built the deck for. You know, I wanted to play a Karn deck, try to take full advantage of Karn the Great Creator, all of its abilities, um, you know, have a, a different way to fight the Jund Sacrifice deck that, of course, is really popular. And, yeah, I'm just really proud of this deck. The one, one thing that I could see, Voracious Hydra has just been awesome for us all the time. I want another Voracious Hydra in here, and I, I guess over the once in future. We haven't really been using this once in future. Uh, we haven't really played against, like, well, the once in future is pretty critical against control, or, like, it's, it's just really, it's good against, like, blue-white control. Maybe over the third Spyglass. Like, I'm not sure if, if you really need three Spyglasses. If you want to keep the once in future. I don't know. Maybe maybe you don't need the once in future. But yeah, I think I think we want another Voracious Hydra in the board to be able to play in these creature matchups because the Voracious Hydra has been really clutch a lot. Um, you could take out the Golos too. I like the Golos myself. The Golos is just a, a it's a turn five play after you play Karn to ramp to help you get to other big stuff. If you're kind of stuck on lands. And you just played a, a Karn and you're kind of stuck on lands. Golos plays good defense. It's just a it's a card that makes Karn better. But that could be once in future also, if you want. You could also just, yeah, you could play Stone Coil. Stone Coil is, is another kind of similar card. If, if, you, if you want, like basically Golos ramps you. But if you're not as worried about that, you could have Stone Coil instead of the Golos. In the sideboard, because yeah, this is another good quality card to grab with Karn. That's a good card too. Yeah, I don't have God Pharaoh statue. Basically, I just don't. I just wanted more meteor golems. Um, we don't have like without like God Pharaoh statue was a lot better before rotation when you had. Helm of the Host, where you could start copying God Pharaoh statues and have them start adding up. But when you only have the one God Pharaoh statue, and by the time you're actually playing it, it's it's probably not as good as you know getting a meteor golem for something, and or just you know getting the Great Henge and just outvaluing with the Great Henge. All right, but there we go. So that's mono green mid range, cool deck here. Uh, good record there. Um, but we need to move on to our other decks. Uh, those of y'all on YouTube, let me know what you think of the deck in the comment section. Of course, also hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to subscribe to the channel. But thank you so much for watching some mono green midrange. And I'll see you for the next video.